Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL League One, and that is uh, a lot. It's Jägermeister Cup having to balance what's going on when it comes to league play. They've got a way to sort it out. I'm glad they do because I certainly have my problems figuring out what is what on any given week. We are in a no dilly, no dally zone trying to figure out what's going on on a weekly basis. Saturday, June 1st, we'll take you back before we take you forward. Breeze Stevens, forward Madison, a 4-1 win over Lexington SC. Charlotte Independence and South Georgia Tormenta had a 1-1 draw. Richmond Kickers on the road beat one Knox at Regal by the final of 2-1. At uh, Warner Park in Papel in Nebraska, Union Omaha loses to Northern Colorado Hailstorm by the final of 2-1, which gets us to our match of the week. Chattanooga Red Wolves, in the middle of a two-match week compression schedule, travel to Furman University in Paladin Stadium to take on the Greenville Triumph. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at USL League One ESPN Plus and you too. Uh, three changes for Rick Wright from that game up at Spokane in the Cup last week. And Leo Castro returns after sitting for the first time last week. Well, the first thing, though, is the, is the shortage on bench. Scott McKenzie with so many injuries. Two changes tonight. One force, thanks to that Omar Hernandez red. And we are underway here in this Sunday clash between the Greenville Triumph and the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Coaches we talked to talk about what a quality player is, what a quality signing it was this offseason. Here's an opportunity shot played towards goal into the arms of TJ Bush. Line McKinnon on the right. He did play there last week against Spokane. Spent most of the time on the left. Played the center forward as well. Castro out. How about that pass from Castro? McKinnon plays it back up top! And Evan Lee's denied by his teammate. In the midfield or up top if necessary. That's a good find to Marsh. Siobhan Marsh has Milango running. Maya Milango into the 18! And the Red Wolves score! Maya Milango with some acrobatics to celebrate. And the Milango train might be picking up some steam here in 2024. It'll list the player if they're out, and then it'll put in why they're out, and usually it's uh, an injury. It'll be insert name, cap injury, insert name, uh, sprain, something along those lines. And then it had these guys' names, and it just said graduation. Here's an opportunity. Fire on goal, and oh, man. It's a wonderful strike from Hayden Anderson. Won the ball back in a nice spot, and he let it fly. There's going to be some questions if there was a foul in the build-up to this. Regardless, a fine strike from Aiden Anderson. And McKinnon now making his way into the 18. McKinnon back to the top. Here's a shot. And Evan Lee couldn't test DJ Bush enough. They're still waiting to get to that point. In Chattanooga, given the fact that so much of that personnel is missing, for Papa Mensa, Pedro Hernandez, Lucas Coutinho, as this one slipped through, and TJ Bush once again making the stop. We'll need to push forward here, or they may get a whistle cutting them short. And that will do it. After 45 plus minutes, it's still tied up one goal apiece between Chattanooga and Greenville. As we just saw, though, the shot disparity pretty wide between the two. As Evan Lee had one of those shots. Pauses, plays it in the middle, and a wind-up effort! It's cleared off the line and saved by Bush! But now they've pointed to the penalty spot. Jamie Smith from the penalty spot. An early chance to give Greenville the lead in this second half. And Smith is denied! TJ Bush keeps it at one apiece. A drawn game, then a point to the spot. Earning some despair here for Chattanooga, but they stepped up anyway. That's a well-struck penalty and a quality save. But... Long ball going forward for Green. Green with a nice touch. Owen Green playing it centrally. And after the deflection, it's headed in. 
Siobhan Mars recaptures the advantage for Chattanooga. What a ball to Owen Green in an advanced position. and Ball in that forced the missed kick from Tyler Pollock. One three points this would be if Chattanooga could pull it out. And here's another opportunity. Siobhan Marsh beats the keeper. And it's into the back of the net. Greenville all over the place. And Siobhan Marsh taking advantage once again. A wow. tragic moment for Greenville and a drastic one for Chattanooga. Jamie Smith trying to find McKinnon. That's a good touch for McKinnon, splitting the defender. He gets pushed down. No whistle oh, call. That's a penalty. And now that one will be going to the spot. Silly, silly from Jamil Roberts. Only with one goal this season, it was in the season opener against Spokane. He also made a penalty in the shootout last weekend. Up against TJ Bush. And Evan Lee hits the woodwork. <laughs> my oh my. Have a look at it. Bush went the right way, but he was beaten. But Marsh, once again cooking. Schultz, excuse me, that was Lukic. Ball comes in. Still in the mix of things. And out for a goal kick. It was hefty. The ref says it's all fair game. It was fine, but it was inches from not being. Zakowski. Over to Castro. Castro inside, saved by Bush. Nice ball from Herrera going forward. Zakowski still with it. Ben Zakowski shoots! And it's denied by Bush. Zakowski with the turn here. A little shimmy inside. Wasn't much room. One start in the last four for Zion Scarlett in League One. Lasted 45 minutes in that start. Zakowski takes the effort himself and not too challenging for TJ Bush. But with the amount of pace that Jamie Smith hit it with, if he had just gotten a piece of it, it was going to bounce straight back out right into the danger zone. And here's Siobhan Marsh. He's on a hat trick. Marsh, that's a good tackle. Jamie Smith. Maybe another chance here for Chattanooga. Already up two goals. Lukic takes the shot, and it's just wide. That would have made the draw feel better if he'd put that one in. Stefan Lukic turned 28 yesterday. It's one of those strange ones tonight. It's a defiant victory for the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Going on the road and knocking off the top of the table tryout. Big win on the road for Chattanooga Red Wolves. They had to turn around in short order and host Union Omaha at CHI Memorial Stadium. And it turned out that Union Omaha would end up with five on the board by the end of the night, and they would beat the Red Wolves by the final of 5-2. Let's go over the standings in the league as well as the standings in Jägermeister Cup. So standings, once again, they're two separate things. You have the matchups that are going on involving regular season play, and they're interweaving what's going on with everything in Jägermeister Cup. Union Omaha, 16, uh, 16 points, five wins. They equal Greenville, who've played two more league matches than they have, and a better goal difference for Union Omaha with uh, plus nine to plus five. Forward Madison's played seven league matches. They have not lost a league match this year. Big goal difference at a plus 10, and they have 15 points so far in the season. One knocks at 13 points. South Georgia Tormenta has played nine matches as well in league. They have 11 points. They would be fifth. They have the same number of wins as Charlotte Independence, but they have a better goal difference, which puts them fifth and sixth. Spokane Velocity, they are in seventh place with 10 points in seven matches. Richmond Kickers would be the last team in the playoff picture as it currently stands, eight matches played and eight points. Chattanooga Red Wolves, they are at 2-3-1. and one. The win last time out, or two matches ago, really did help them out with uh, their status in the table. They went from uh, 11th to 9th, and so they are at seven points in six matches played, so they have matches in hand to uh, try to climb into what would be the postseason picture. 
Northern Colorado Hailstorm snapped the four-match unbe- uh, the four-match winless streak to get their first league win of the season in their fifth home match or their fifth match in league play, and they have five points at one, two, and two. They have a better goal difference than Lex SC, who's lost four of five. Seven matches played, five points and a minus eight. Central Valley has lost five in a row in seven matches. They are one and six under Jermaine Jones, three points and a minus ten in goal difference so far this season. In Jägermeister Cup, looking at the standings, and remember it is group play, and the groups have been divided into uh, three with the 12 franchises. And your group number one, Greenville, three matches, six points. Richmond, three matches, five points, the difference being the uh, win in the shootout after a regulation draw. Charlotte has three points in Jägermeister Cup. South Georgia Tormenta has one point, having uh, lost two but picked up a point for a draw, losing in the shootout in group number one. Group number two, it is Lex SC. They are at eight points. Ford Madison with six. Chattanooga Red Wolves with one win and a better goal difference than one Knox. Both of them are at three points, group number three. Northern Colorado at six points, Spokane at five. Central Valley is at four points with three draws and one extra shootout win. Union Omaha has four points and a worse goal difference than Central Valley, zero to minus one. And so that's where things stand in both standing standings and in USL Jägermeister Cup standings as we go forward. Player of the Month voting. In USL League One, presented by our friends at Konami eFootball, it is Christian Cheney from Forward Madison, and it is uh, his forward play, only one of two players in League One history to score more than 10 goals with multiple teams, all-time leading scorer across all comps, one goal, two assists, and two, uh, two wins in the month of May. Pedro Dolabella for Union Omaha, the Sao Paulo FC youth product and national champ at Marshall, two goals and two assists. Joe Gajardo for Union Omaha and the former U.S. Youth International had a goal and two assists against South Georgia Tormenta, the first three-goal contribution of his career, and had a month of 12 duels, one six chances, 81% passing, 13 recoveries, and 166 minutes. Sebastian Vivas is name number four. He joined uh, South Georgia Tormenta in the offseason after coming from the Argentine lower divisions. Three goals, one assist, 13 duels, one five chances created, four shots on target, 85% passing accuracy in 165 minutes. You, faithful listener, have until June 10th at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Fan vote at USLLeagueONE.com. 60% of the poll, the technical committee gets the other 40%, and the winners are announced on June the 11th. And so that is your player of the month voting. When it comes to the viewing guide, everything this weekend is in Jägermeister Cup, and it is all on ESPN+. Plus. If you want to look up things in USL Championship, it is ESPN+, Plus. other than the doubleheader Saturday, June the 8th, Loose City and North Carolina FC at 8 o'clock on Golasso Network, and then the back end of the doubleheader at 11 Eastern, Phoenix Rising and Orange County SC. Everything else is on the plus. Everything is on ESPN Plus on Saturday and Sunday involving Jägermeister Cup for this week when it comes to Saturday and Sunday's action. Uh, all the other activity going on, you have a, a really cool moment, the special debut for AV Alta. The Antelope Valley franchise AV Alta had a really cool brand identity unveiling. You have the Lancaster Municipal Stadium where the Jethawks played in the California League, they're converting it to a 5,300-seat soccer-specific configuration, 1,100 season ticket deposits in the first 24 hours of release, 2,500 locals celebrating with uh, uh, AV Alta FC founder and president John Smeltzer. And you can catch up with Smeltzer. When AV came online, we caught up with him at SDH, so you do an Antelope Valley search in our uh, podcatchers, and you can hear the interview that we had with John Smelzer. This just means we've got to catch up with him and uh, see what is going on with the update and the branding and how the response has been out there in Lancaster. So very, very cool stuff involving AV Alta and their growth. Spokane Velocity defeated uh, Chivas' U23s for the, in their first international friendly, so really cool stuff for Spokane Velocity 
at uh, at the the hangar or, or the jug. Or I don't know what you what you would call it, the nickname for the the Spokane Stadium, but there's got to be something involving with speed. Maybe the hangar where uh, Spokane Velocity plays, defeating uh, Chivas's U23s in their first international friendly. And also, don't forget, you can follow along in everything going on in USL League One on the social medias, on the 280 character app, on the Facebook and on the Insta, and you can follow along there each and every time. With uh, activity going on this week being just Jägermeister Cup, no juice boxes are attached in these matchups right now. They might be later, but not at this particular moment. All the matches this week are tied to Jägermeister Cup. 7 o'clock at Regal, One Knox hosting Lex. 7 o'clock at City Stadium, away from the six and the 6.30 uh, kickoffs for uh, – for Jägermeister Cup. Richmond hosting Charlotte. 7.30 CHI CHM Memorial. Chattanooga hosting Forward Madison. 9 o'clock at Four Rivers Equipment Stadium. It's got a name now. Northern Colorado Hailstorm hosting Central Valley. And Sunday at Tormenta Stadium, it is Greenville and South Georgia Tormenta in the Peach States Derby. So maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a Jägermeister with some peach. You know, maybe maybe there's a peach-flavored Jägermeister that we don't know about. But uh, that is that is your uh Activity in USL League One for the weekend. All five matchups are in Jägermeister Cup competition. The next match in league play is Thursday the 13th at Warner Park in Papillon, Nebraska. Spokane traveling to the Murder Owls to take on Union Omaha. If you are in market and want to catch up with what's going on in the Jägermeister Cup in USL League One, we would recommend that you do so. If you're in market, please go and visit. You can see the third division of U.S. soccer and all the players and what they mean to their communities. If you are in market and cannot be there in person, follow along on your local providers. If you're out of market and still want to follow along, please do so either through the local providers or through us here at SDH, ESPN+, CBS Colosso Network, and USLLeagueONE.com. That's your story for everything going on in USL League One this week. For everybody here at SDH and everybody at USL League One, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy the action in USL League One. We will catch up with you next week.